Here are some clips from flying over the Santa Rosa's devastating wildfires, capturing infrared to make maps for the CAL FIRE team. I'm flying about 9,000 feet solo and operating the uh, gimbal that sees infrared and visible video and transmits it live to the ground where they can do mapping. Um, on air traffic control, who is watching over me, separating me from traffic by three miles or so and a thousand or two thousand feet. So it's actually quite relaxing up there. I scan my instruments and keep track of everything, but I'm also able to operate the gimbal out there on the wing. And here's the PC that has a touch interface and I'm able to touch any aspect of it. There I've turned it infrared and this is a fire line that I'm tracking. And I will track that by touching it. I keep in touch with the ground on my iPhone, whether by texting or talking, or I also have aircraft radios, and we have several voice over IP channels that allow continuous communication, but all of them work sometimes and sometimes not. This is not only captured for mapping, but is live to other firefighters around the fires. Guys down there in the smoke sometimes can't see spots. We discover them and transmit that live to their iPads. Here's a tanker drop. In this case, I'm actually operating it from the ground on the air attack plane. I'm not flying. And we, we've captured a tanker drop to inspect it for coverage. And so once we see it land, the retardant is cooler and shows a thermal footprint, which we can inspect and determine if the coverage level is adequate. This is the air attack plane that's over the fire. It's 690B Commander turbine. Goes real fast, flies real high, pressurized. This is the workstation in the back where we do the uh, support for the guy in the right seat who has a tablet PC surface that he can use just sitting right there and uh, looks out the window and watches the fire and uh, sees all this mapping stuff and then I either sit in the back here with another workstation, mouse and game controller looking out the window or sit on the ground here we're at Santa Rosa Airport and I don't know if you can see the vans but they're over there by that jet and uh, they communicate to the plane which is up over the fire which is on those distant hills. Here's the gimbal it's sucked up inside the plane right now it comes down it's retracted so that it'll come down and uh, and that does all the magic. It's a drone gimbal from Cloudcap. But well, we actually have two IRs. This is the second one that gives a continuous persistent view of the fire. Here's the guts. It makes it work. So we got routers, switches, bonded cellular. We call this the AIS, Airborne Information System, that uh, takes the gimbal and converts it into this and transmits it to the ground and the mesh network comes together through that high speed, high power antennas. We've actually got eight of them. Wi Fi frequencies, basically, but it's not Wi Fi. They're all over the plane here. And this is what we can communicate to the plane up. Well, actually, it's been 100 miles. One hop, we can talk to the plane, but normally we don't go that far. We uh, put up a mesh that goes 40 or 50 miles. Here's the Courtney Aviation Fire View Van running off generator. We have power uh, through gas or uh, solar power that we'll put up here. And here's our mesh network antennas that can go 50 miles or so, make a multiple layer mesh that will be up to 80 megabits throughput to the airplane and around the fire. We have bonded cellular four channels that we can bring out to different locations of the fire. <clears throat> We have uh, VHF and FM radios uh, as used on the fire. VHF is the aircraft radio, as you can hear, uh, going on. Turn that down, and we have the FM, and here's the bonded cellular, and here's our equipment rack of uh, local area network, routers, switches, VPNs that connect all of these things together logically. We have um, backup power supply and computers that are rather powerful with NVIDIA cards and, and that uh, goes to this operator station. We have complete control of the airplane here, well, not plane, but uh, infrared on the airplane. 
and can operate it and take shots. It's often smoky, as you can see there. We can't see through the smoke with the visible, but can with the infrared. And this is the same configuration that's on the airplane. They can operate it there too. And we'll take shots and then bring them onto Google Earth where there is a perimeter that we line it up with to draw slop overs and spot fires and send that to the fire uh, GIS team and the uh, situations team so that they can um, put it on the daily maps and also the situations uh, map. Mapping live with this three split screen is possible, but often we wait until the plane moves to another part of the fire and the operator switches over to mapping station while another ground operator takes over live operation. The just recorded data is replayed from the network shared drive and the operator, who still has everything fresh in their head, pulls up the best screenshots to map from. F1 takes snapshots that lay accurately on Google Earth and can be sent to people on the fire. Also, we are often live in ops tent or trailer where they can instant replay any part that they want. These are spots across the line that the Vision Bravo Bravo is holding. When first discovered, the operator was already talking to air attack pilot and told him to look on the cockpit screen where he had centered these spots. The ATGS, who can't see through the smoke, confirmed them visually on the screen and agreed these were spots of concern and told the divisions, call in a helitanker and put them out. The relieved operator now starts acting like an aerial field observer, or FOB. He draws the slop overs on Google Earth, saves the KML, and emails it to GIS and situations, who get the map line while the plane is still off flying somewhere else. Operating and mapping from a drone gimbal hitchhiking on the air attack is free of additional flight costs. Operating the drone gimbal on an unmanned aerial vehicle is also fine, but much less cost and more effective is on a solo Cessna, we call a manned UAV. This is the same drone gimbal that's got an over and under infrared and visible super zoom on it. And it connects into the cockpit and um, this little plane actually does more than the big plane. Uh, it can float around up there on uh, very few gallons of gas and uh, does all the transmission and infrared. Here's my seat and uh, I've got the control of the ball there on that PC and then I have my iPad for navigating over the fire although sometimes I put that PC up here it folds into a into a tablet both of them are touch screen and I can zoom around with my fingers and my iPhone that I'm filming with right now goes right there and that works pretty good and here's a cool thing that just got figured out yeah, that's my game controller that runs the ball and I can fly the airplane and keep my fingers on these things and basically operate the ball while driving. What you operate is this, which is also touch interface. You touch something and it, it goes there. And so what I'll do, if you touch the object, it locks on. I can also double touch the map. And wherever I double touch the map, the ball goes, as it has just done. And so then I can go to infrared, and that's infrared, and it does the same thing. And you can touch that screen, and there's the fuel island out there in infrared. And all that's recorded, and we bring it back to the ground and map with it. And this is a, they had a spot fire, so they gave me the coordinates, I pushed it in, and ball locked on. That's nice. Here in the plane, all the gear that runs this is um, here. We have a bonded cellular router, so I have internet up there, actually pretty good. Although my iPhone sometimes is better than our bonded router. Then we've got a switch with multiple VPNs. Everything is on batteries, but also powered. We're charging the batteries as well as running the system on batteries so that I can stay up almost indefinitely. That's a Linux box back there, which powers our connectivity to people on the ground, which is through a mesh network that can go anywhere from 50 to 100 miles. And it brings down the live video 
to people's iPads, iPhones, iToys, PCs, whatever, as well as uh, they're able to operate this from the, the whole kit as I can operate in the plane, they can operate from the ground and record from the ground and do, do mapping. And that's ideal because we want to start mapping before I come back to the ground. They are mapping while I'm out there. And so that goes through to our mesh network guy right here that goes out to antennas, which I'll show you. Here's my oxygen, which I keep because sometimes I'm up high for a long time. And on the outside of the plane, we have these antennas that allow us to transmit a really long way. Here's the Tubbs fire which is out by Mount St. Helena. You can see shrouded with a inversion of smoke. And that smoke is from the pocket fire, which is uh, behind, there's our other air attack plane out there, that uh, behind that is the fire that's still the most active. They're doing a big burnout that we're tracking for them. On that burnout, the air attack was flying and we were operating from the ground and one of the operators was scanning the dozer line looking for spots as the plane was doing its normal business and uh, we discovered one that turned out to be quite important and kept the fire from going out of control.